So, uh, yeah, they're the NHL's biggest punching bag at the moment. Are they really? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. The Buffalo Sabres were a very big punching bag for the NHL and its fans for a long time, so I don't really know if the Columbus Blue Jackets are just that. But today I wanted to talk about the Blue Jackets because... A few days ago, maybe it was yesterday, I completely forgot, it was a while ago, they have officially been eliminated from playoff contention. They have no chance at making the 2021 Stanley Cup playoffs. If you take a look at the NHL standings at the moment, if they were to win every single one of their six remaining games, they would finish off with a record of 52 points. Well, the Predators are currently in the fourth spot in the Central Division playoff race, and they have 56, so that means that Columbus is officially out. Which begs a very important question, one that I've been kind of pondering to myself for a little bit, and one that I'm sure many of you have been thinking about as well. When it comes to the Columbus Blue Jackets, where do they go from here? This was a year where they were supposed to go out there, acquire Patrick Lyonnais, acquire Max Domi, and just completely wreck havoc on the league. They were supposed to be the best versions of themselves. You had the new guys coming onto the squad, another year of Texier, another year of Foodie. You guys got Miko Koivu in the offseason. He was supposed to be a leadership presence that propelled this team into the playoffs because, hey, you guys had a chance at actually doing stuff last year because you beat Toronto in the playing round. That was awesome. But hey, the Blue Jackets are in a spot now where everything they did to try to actually solidify themselves as a team hasn't really worked out. I mean, Koivu retired immediately after the season began, which I guess isn't anybody's fault. It just kind of is how the dominoes fall. But hey, that isn't really the best scenario for a team that went out and shelled some money in this guy instead of shelling out some money for another guy who probably could have had a better impact on the team when he was here. The Patrick Laine trade has not really been the best. I mean, Pierre-Luc Dubois is doing pretty well with the Jets right now. Jack Roslevic seems to be the best player out of this trade so far. And Patrick Laine, man, we've made so many videos about Laine and how things have gone for his season thus far that, yeah, I don't even know what else to say at this point. Max Domi for Josh Anderson. Josh Anderson's out there scoring a whole bunch of goals for Montreal. If Josh Anderson was on the Blue Jackets this season, he would be the first guy on the team in goals. So, yeah, you traded away this guy for Max Domi, who is getting scratched, who is being played in the fourth line, he's losing his temper, he's not really doing all too well. I'll admit, we've seen better versions of Max Domi for sure in the previous few seasons of his NHL career. This Columbus tenure so far hasn't been one of his best. And then you have the coach. John Tortorella's in a spot where so many people are speculating that he is probably going to be out by the time this season is over. Because his contract does expire, because he has a choice to either stay or go, the way things have gone down where he's out here really running the ship the way that he feels is necessary, scratching guys, benching guys, talking about guys, and, you know, just being John Tortorella. It's kind of funny to me, and honestly kind of cool, that a lot of Blue Jackets fans are very dynamic in their opinions about Tortorella. Just from doing my own fair share of lurking around the Blue Jackets subreddit and their Twitter page and their overall social media presence for their fans, I just think it's really cool that people acknowledge that, hey, Torts was a great coach for this team at a certain time in the team's lifespan. But now, that's changed, and now I think it's time to amicably part ways with this coach. Which I think is a pretty good thing if you're able to rationally understand that Tortorella did have a very good amount of value to this team. I mean, come on, they're the guys who beat the Lightning for nothing when they were the best team in NHL history. That's something to deal with right there, and I know the team is a lot better with that roster compared to this one, but still, the way Tortorella has been running this team, who really knows if he's going to come back this year, but you have some other questions to go down with other guys like Patrick Laine and Max Domi. Domi's in a spot where he's got one more year at $5.3 million dollars, on this team. And if things go as poorly as they did this year, next year, who knows how exactly his reaction is going to be. Is he going to request an extension or a trade or whatever? I'll tell you this right here. The reason the contract expires next year is because last year with Montreal, there were a whole bunch of questions going around with Max Domi as to whether or not this guy would be the best version of himself if you signed him long term. Last year when he was an RFA, Canadians fans still had that argument, oh, he had 72 points the year before. That's cool and all, but this year, he was at 
what, 44 points in 70-ish games. Is it the right decision to sign this guy long-term, a short-term, bridge deal, whatever? Do you give him a two-year contract to prove himself and potentially set him up for some more money later down the line when he finishes up his two-year deal? Well, the Columbus Blue Jackets, they went out there and they did that. That's why when the trade happened, the details were made public. Hey, the Canadians wanted to sign Josh Anderson to a long-term deal, and that's what they did. For Domi, he wanted short-term, which is why the Columbus Blue Jackets gave him what he got. Now he's got one more year in a team where he really didn't perform the best that he could. I mean, the production speaks for itself. 21 points in 48 games played is not terrible, but compared to what we know Max Domi was capable of before, plus the shenanigans that were involved this year where he's getting benched, he's getting scratched, full-on just not even playing in a single game because he's losing his temper against Chicago and Dallas— Things are getting a little bit weird for Max Domi at this point in his career. I mean, he is 26 years old, so there still is a good amount of body of work to accomplish at this NHL level. It's just, does that happen with Columbus long term? Who really knows? As for the other guy, though, Patrick Laine. This is a bigger one, because Patrick Laine is indeed expiring this offseason. And the biggest question is, hey, what kind of money are you going to give to this guy? 18 points... 40 games, 10 goals on the year. He's supposed to be an elite franchise number one goal scoring forward, which is okay. He could definitely be that if he really did produce to the rate that we know he is capable of every single year. I mean, this guy got 30 goals in his sleep a few years ago. Now he's on pace for 20 goals over a full 82 game season, which is okay. Not bad, 20 goals, right? That's a pretty good number. It's just, it's Patrick Laine doing that. Before with Winnipeg, this guy had five goals in a single game. That's a quarter of the entire year's worth of production that he's got for this year, if you do the math. So for Patrick Laine and the number that he's going to get, do you sign this guy long-term? And if so, what do you give him? Is this a long-term lock him down because we know what he is and we know what he's going to be? This year is just an outlier year kind of contract? Or do you go out there and give him that Max Domi treatment? Here's two years, we'll give you X amount of dollars, and that X amount of dollars is somewhat insignificant because when you become the best player you can be, Patrick Laine, when you're 25 years old, when this next contract expires, that's when you're going to get your big bucks. And I think when it comes to the overall conversations to have about signing Line A, I've been seeing many Blue Jackets fans asking the question, is this the kind of guy you build a franchise around? And my default answer, honestly, it's kind of with the masses on this one, not really. Patrick Line at his core is a very good finisher, a number one goal scorer in this league at his best, but he's not the kind of guy that drives a line. He's not the kind of guy that makes his teammates better. He's the kind of guy that you give the puck to when you guys are doing an offensive cycle and you want the puck to be in the back of the net. You send it to Line A, he shoots it, boom, it's in. We know he can do a few crazy good moves once in a while. That end-to-end -end rush goal that he scored the other night was brilliant. But Patrick Laine has made his bread and butter by being an on-the-stick, off-the-stick, quick-release shooter that makes his money by just the overwhelming amount of goals that he is able to score. And I guess it's really clear that when you have a team that is so good on the wing for this one position, you probably need another center to go out there and feed him the puck a little bit more, I would say. Domi was supposed to be that, but he's not. Plain and simple. He's playing on the fourth line because the other guys in the lineup are better than him. That's how it goes. As for Patrick Laine, though, I mean, at his best, we know what he can be. It's just this season, we really haven't seen his best. So now you have to ask yourself, where do we go from here? We have to see what Yarmo Kekalainen is going to do to try to either make or break this fellow Finn on the roster into what is ultimately going to be either a very good number one superstar in Columbus or just an afterthought in, I don't know, a significant trade down the line. Who really knows? There's a lot of conversations I have about these, so if you made it to this part of the video, then please, hey, talk to me in the comments. What do you think is going to happen with John Tortorella? I think that's kind of the most obvious one right here, but Tortorella, what do you think is going to go on with this guy next year? Max Domi, what's going to be the situation for him? Do they ride him out? Do they try to trade him or what? What's going to happen with Max Domi? Things are getting really interesting, not only for Blue Jackets fans, but for Coyote fans, for Montreal fans especially, because they love keeping up to date with their former Canadiens guys in the league. 
And of course, what do you think is going to happen to Patrick Laine too? This guy's the most intriguing one because he does expire this season as well. I wouldn't be surprised if Patrick Laine signed a short-term deal, but that's kind of the boring answer here. I want you to talk to me about how things could get crazy. What's the biggest, craziest thing you could see happening with Patrick Laine in the offseason this year? I want you to tell me about that in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vistage Wilson 99. And bye.